Tilda Season 2 dropped this week, and though there weren't too many new creatures, we did get a few, as well as some expanded lore about the creatures from Season 1. So we thought now would be a good time to explain all of these fun little monsters and what their abilities are. The most prominently featured characters throughout the series, of course, are the trolls. They seem to exist throughout the land, as Hilda even manages to find one in the wilderness near her first home, but they seem to have clustered around Trollberg before being pushed out of it. As of Season 2, they seem to be getting closer and closer to the city walls, so much so that they are interfering with farmers on the outside of the city. Trolls are known to be dangerous and aggressive creatures who can be driven away with bells. The bells don't actually hurt the trolls, they just annoy them, so while they can be effective in getting rid of them, they can also just make them more angry and dangerous. Trolls turn to stone during the daylight, as sunlight makes them grow a rocky exterior, but are able to roam around at night or in any place where there is no sunlight. They tend to have strong familial bonds and are able to respect that in other species as well, such as humans. On top of their great strength, trolls also have the ability to create artificial light, the exact purposes for which is not quite known, as they seem to have no trouble seeing in the dark. The light looks like a fire and can keep you warm, but is not hot enough to burn anyone. Despite being one of the creatures of the show that are not capable of speech, and seemingly don't even have a real language among their own species, they do show enough intelligence to communicate non-verbally and be reasoned with to some degree, as well as use simple tools such as cups for beverages that they seem to brew themselves. Trolls often fight amongst themselves, but it's not seen as a problem unless a particularly powerful troll uses their strength to bully. Trolls don't seem to be afraid of much, but they are afraid of rock-chewing slugs, strange little slimy things that live in the same caves as them and only seem to be interested in eating rocks. This may be because the trolls are somewhat rock-based, considering that they grow rocky exteriors when exposed to sunlight. However, it's only seen to be an outer shell to the troll that can be cracked even in the day, with the troll still underneath, so it's hard to say why they find them frightening, other than perhaps that some of them grow so massive that they could easily eat trolls in just one bite, as we saw in the stone forest. In this year's Christmas special, we got to meet Gorilla and the 13 Yule Lads, who both have roots in real-life Icelandic folklore. Gorilla, as seen in the show, actually eats the flesh of naughty children, but thankfully Hilda was able to placate her with vegetable broth. The 13 Yule Lads, on the other hand, are known for going around and pulling pranks on people, with their names being descriptive to the types of pranks they pull, as seen in Hilda as well. In the episode Eternal Warriors, we meet a Sigurd, a swamp man who has the power to bring people back from the dead. This is likely a reference to the Boogeyman, who was inspired by the preserved bodies found of people who had drowned in bogs, which are similar to swamps. In the episode The Beast of Cauldron Island, we meet the Kraken, a giant underwater creature with many eyes and tentacles that likes to eat wood, which is a bit odd for a sea creature considering you don't really find wood in the water, but lucky for him, there are a lot of sunken ships to eat. Also living on the island is the Lindworm, a dragon-like creature whose fire is used to burn elven contracts, a process that the Lindworm finds annoying. Lindworms are pretty fickle, if the one we met is any indication, and has no problem killing others for being just mildly annoying. In the 50 Year Night, we get to see a creature that exists sort of outside of the general realm of Hilda's world, the Time Worm. Unlike the other creatures, which seem to be naturally existing in the wild, the Time Worm seems to exist sort of between dimensions with a specific purpose, as opposed to naturally evolving in some habitat. The Time Worm mindlessly eats whatever creatures are existing in a wrong timeline, something that happens if people are careless with time travel and changing the past. They seem to automatically know who is the wrong person in each timeline, and if that changes in an instant, they immediately know the new target. This may not be an actual animal in the way we think of them, or even a conscious entity so much as an organic tool, if we can even assume that the Time Worm is even organic. Deer foxes have been around since the very beginning of the show, or at least Twig has. In Season 2, however, we get some more backstory not just on Twig as a character, but on his species as a whole. The Woodman explains that deer foxes are considered something of a myth. It turns out that they are so rare to find because they actually live in what appears to be some sort of dimensional plane or up in space that is only accessible through an aurora borealis. Here, deer foxes walk on light. 
Not much is known about how they function in this world, what they would eat, or why they visit Earth every year or so. Like many of the creatures in Hilda's world, they seem to be smart enough to understand complex relationships and perhaps even human language. In this episode, we also meet what the wiki calls the Red Wolf. Outside of being red, it doesn't seem to have any other embellishments to give it that fantasy spin that most other creatures in the show have, likely because they just needed a simple one-off antagonist for the episode. It seems to be a mindless killer, going after humans or deer foxes, and going through great lengths to attack them. In the episode The Witch, we got a small burst of new creatures that weren't very elaborated on, and in many cases, don't appear to be part of the natural world of Hilda. We meet a golem, a gargoyle, a sphinx, a sentient void, and a living plant. It is uncertain if these are creatures found elsewhere in the world, or just magically enchanted creatures created by the witches, though the void has to be fed or it will lose control, so it may have existed and the witches just keep it at bay. In Season 2, we also get a little bit more on the Salt Lions, creatures that made small appearances back in Season 1. They're basically little sea monsters, though they have paws so that they can come on land. They are both cute and terrifying to me, as they apparently have no problem eating people if they are caught near them in the ocean. Going back to Season 1, we have the Bagesse, which is just a giant black dog basically, hence why it appeared in an episode called The Black Hound. While they are considered something of a myth in the show, it is believed that they, because of their large size, were once the pets of giants, which leads me to the next creatures, giants. Giants weren't much different than humans, it seemed, and lived long before them. They are about as intelligent as humans, but seemingly a lot more sympathetic, as they chose to jump into space and leave the planet for them when they realized that their giant size was making it hard for humans to flourish. They seem to have developed strong bonds with one another, so much so that the giants that first appeared in the series waited a thousand years for each other, which indicates that giants also live much longer than humans and may even be immortal. They not only left Earth by jumping into space, but also required one giant to always be on guard watching space, in case any threats to Earth came from there, indicating that there may be aliens in Hilda's universe and that they could have visited Earth at some point in the past, which made the giants wary. One of the more interesting creatures introduced are the Nyssa, who are typically furry beings with big noses, though some are known to be bald, and look pretty human without their fur. They are able to travel into a sort of dimensional space made up of all the unused space that exists between furniture and walls, and are an in-world explanation for the real-life mystery of how things seemingly go missing in our own homes. Many of the creatures of the show are shown to be rather rare, with only one or so appearing in the entire series, and the Thunderbird is no exception to that. Despite being named after a real-life folklore that describes the Thunderbird as being something of a pterosaur, the one from Hilda just looks like a giant raven that can grow in size. One of the more common creatures in the show are wafts, little floating fur balls that are a bit of a cute take on atmospheric beasts, a hypothetical family of various species that are believed to be capable of existing on planets such as Jupiter, where an internal body heat and the right combination of gases could make a creature float in the atmosphere as opposed to flying with the help of something like wings as creatures do on Earth. They are pretty common and seen in many episodes. Humans generally spook them, they are also rather clumsy and can have a hard time getting back in the air again if knocked out of it unceremoniously. While they generally avoid humans, one does come to save Hilda, a white waff, which is fabled to be good luck for witches. Another one of my favorite creatures is the Woodman. Like deer foxes, he implies that they are believed to be largely a myth, but we don't really figure out why like we do with the deer foxes. He shows human intelligence and lives in a home similar to the humans. Despite being made of wood, he does like the warmth of fire and will often bring stray logs to Hilda's house to keep the fire going and keep himself warm. He constantly invaded their home despite claiming not to like them and having his own home to use. He later comes around and considers himself something of a friend to Hilda. He has a penchant for gambling and likes collecting anything he can get his hands on, even things that he would have to risk his own life or the lives of others to get, just for decoration. Finally, we have the Vitra, plant-based creatures kind of like the Woodman, but far more common and living around Trollberg. Not much to say about them other than they are resilient, taking a stake to the head and getting right back up. That seems to be all the creatures I was able to find. I chose not to include witches, ghosts, or Mara, as they just seem to be humans at their core who changed in one way or another. But if there are any I missed, let me know in a comment down below. See you next time.